Hi, I am Cesar Santos and I am traveling by train across the United States. We just arrived here in Washington. I'm planning to check out some museums, look at some monuments, some art, and maybe do some paintings. We have a couple of hours to do everything. <laughs> We have in Washington until 4.30 in the afternoon to take the next train and move forward. Let's head out. Still early. <laughs> The museums are closed, so I'm gonna do a quick sketch of the White House while we're waiting and then head out to the museum. So let's do some sketching. Basically, I was doing a time lapse of this, but they came and took everybody out of the front of the White House. This is what I got so far. Um, let's see if I can keep uh, working on this. Sorry for the interruption of the time lapse. Sometimes that happens. Maybe they saved me before this got worse. <laughs> I'm thinking to leave this like this, kind of like um, bleached out and kind of uh, washy. Oh, whistleblowers got fired or promotions. We got endless war storm war, bringing all the fascists. It's done. Actually, it was hard to find something as cheesy as painting the White House in Washington, D.C. Sometimes you find these iconic things and for my sketchbook and for my memories, I thought, what a cool thing to just have the White House. Since I wanted to do it in a quick way, I decided to just get a grasp of the main value. So a very washy kind of layout of the value of the White House, then a little bit of the sky, and then I just laid in some of the touches. But what helped was that at first I did that line drawing to just map everything, to put some gouache paint on it quickly and get the impression because I wanted to get this kind of moody, cloudy day. The museum is open now, so let's go! Here we are at the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. You know my love for portraiture is real since we can choose only from one museum in the city because we don't have time because the train is leaving. We decided to go with the portrait gallery. Normally we see the paintings finished and it's hard for us to, to detect what was underneath and what was the intention of the artist. So I'm gonna try to look for unfinished works to point out those beginnings. There is a big range of portraiture in here from classical portraiture to contemporary. Normally, I like to go to the classical area because the portraits of the 19th century represented more the character, the iconic idea of the, of the person they're portraying. They're not just literally copying 
aspects of the face just by, by themselves as a camera would do it. So let's go in there and see some art. This is a great example when we say that a painting is just presented from one point of view. A photograph doesn't know how to do that because it takes everything in consideration, but a painter decides what to focus and what to leave out, even though everything else is also present. Like for example, the face on the light side is what required and requested or took the energy or uh, call the attention of the artist from that point of view. The rest is subordinate, the rest is being left behind so that the light and the, the texture and the feeling of the character is presented just in that area. And everything else back here in the bottom is just presented but more with a peripheral vision. Evolve and develop something specifically and then make everything around it secondary and third but in an obvious manner. So on the light side of the face is that we see contrast, line work, sharper edges, um, higher chroma of the flesh, even like the little red behind the eye and the nose. Even the amount of paint application also is, uh, is being added there on purpose. So it's just like that crispy sense around that area with the use of line, color, value, and even paint application in contrast to the rest vaguely smoother, softer, um, less paint atmosphere. This is a good way to begin a portrait. Instead of a monochrome wash drawing, this is more of a local color wash drawing where he's placing stuff. The artist is massing in the main values and the main colors and then I guess from there going and drawing it out. So there is a way to, to start a painting where everything is delineated and, and uh, drawn out. I normally do that to begin with. In this case, it's the opposite. He starts with an idea and then he starts refining it after. This is a good example of the same idea where the point of view from the artist is to capture the essence and the character of this guy right here, keeping her blurry, softer. The application of his face is very broad and very loose, but it doesn't matter because what matters to bring him forward is not the amount of details. To bring a character forward is about the use of sharp lines, bright colors, clear forms, and also depends on the surroundings. So the moment you put him next to this character here where she's softer, she's more blended, uh, then it feels like she's in the further back because she's not as crispy of a texture as he is. This is a, a self-portrait, so maybe she wanted to leave it like that, but these works look like the beginning of an oil painting. You can see the broken colors in the background. Even if an area is red, it has other colors playing into it. When we say local color, it doesn't mean out of the two red. It means general red and observing nature and making it a little bit lighter than what it needs to be, especially the, the dark accents. rescue a little bit of the language of classical portraiture. That's why I go back to these museums and try to dream into our history and see what took us to that development of portraiture and what can I add to my own work today. A museum is where you find the muse and here with all these portraits I find myself very inspired so I cannot wait to go back into the train and do perhaps a portrait of Valentina or do a portrait of, of myself or something.
stop Chicago. I couldn't keep the secret for long. Sorry for the quality of the time lapse, but the light through the mountains and the, and the trees were just flashing and it was shaky, it was a little weird. I decided to, you know, do a little portrait of Valentina. The light was hitting her super nicely in the afternoon because we're facing the north as we are traveling to Chicago. So we were getting the north light and it was pretty even. I don't feel as comfortable working with gouache as I feel with oils, but it is a challenge. And since I love working with paint and I love staining stuff, I'm still enjoying it. I wanted to go fast and kind of sketch it out as I went. And it's been great practice too, because when I'm in the studio, I get too comfortable sometimes. In this whole trip, I've been, I've been working exclusively from life, which is a great practice because I don't get to do that as much when I'm in my studio, in my safe environment. And I need to produce for the galleries and for the art fairs. So I'm exploring here, kind of like going back to being a kid again. I don't even know if I should use more paint with the gouache or uh, just keep it like that transparent. I'm exploring and it's been fun. These brushes are great, by the way. This is a Rosemary brush. It's called Rose of England Series 201, specifically this one, which is nice because you have a nice pointy tip to do details, and at the same time, it's nice and thick in the back to hold the water. It's been fun traveling around the US, so here it is. See you in the next drawing.